all right so we were talking about the um, body fluid compartments in the lecture one we established that what amount of fluids are present in various compartments what is our way of intaking the fluids what how do we lose the fluids and what are the various uh, measurements now what we are going to talk about in this lecture two very important things number one what are the various compositions of the uh, electrolytes and the and the non electrolyte systems which are um, structures or molecules which are present in these compartments what are the compositions and number two what is the concept of how do we measure these compartments again as a doctor that is going to be really important for you, for you to be able to understand how to measure various body compartments or the volumes in the various body compartments that is going to be paramount that is what would determine if you can save the life of a patient or not who is experiencing some volume changes and that is a very common thing in the hospitals to see renal failures and the liver failures and the GIT hemorrhages and the accidental hemorrhages and the, and the accidents and the traumas burns all these things can alter the body fluids even the endocrine system antidiuretic hormone and the thyroid and the and the adrenocortical hormones or mineral corticoids and those cortisol many hormones and many body pathologies actually alter the body fluid compartments which then create secondary pathologies or secondary effects so you should really be aware of how to understand what are the compositions of the compartments and how the homeostasis works in them then in normal physiological case so that, that these were pathological situations in normal physiological case if I take too much water my kidneys are tasked to take care of that extra water which I have taken if I take too much salt my body is tasked to understand how to handle that salt and how to bring the osmolarity back to normal so for all of those situations we have to understand how to interpret the situation so it is a physiological mechanism to handle the osmolarities and the volumes it is a pathological uh, mechanism that these osmolarities and volumes can become undesirably changed and then as a doctor your job is to actually change them back towards the normal so really important stuff so let us start from the what are the various compositions inside these volumes so the first thing I will start with the uh, intracellular so as we talked about it about 74 74 trillion cells interestingly the composition inside the cell of various chemical molecules is almost the same in all of the cells due to that we treat all of those 74 trillion as one big cell so let us say this is our one big cell over here inside the cell so I am not going to make the nucleus and the Golgi operators and the reticulums and those I am really interested at this time to talk about the fluid so I would only talk about the things which matter for that fluid to be present in here so the most important thing is that inside the cells we have huge amount of proteins and these proteins are what are keeping the charges on them so this is a protein sitting so a big amount or a or a greater ratio of proteins is present inside the cells so let us say do we have proteins outside in the interstitial fluid as well normally not uh, usually in pathological situations it is possible that the proteins would start spilling out over here but usually there are less protein or negligible amount of protein present in the interstitial fluid and how about the protein so I would say really really very small protein or almost no protein how about intravascular system yes we have proteins over here we have as as you know we have albumin we have globulins we have uh, immunoglobulins and so on important thing so this is very 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 important 80 percent of the concentration in the intravascular system of proteins is albumin so albumin is the major hitter it is the big hitter inside the vascular systems so we are talking about the compositions we started from the intracellular we talked about the proteins and I, I went to the interstitial and intravascular as well and so we have 
a greater amount of protein is present inside the cell that that is understandable. So, we are 74 trillion cells which has a lot of proteins in them then we have almost negligible proteins inside the interstitial fluid in pathological conditions proteins can appear for for example, after the inflammation or after the infections and so on we are not talking pathology right now we are talking physiology negligible amount of proteins in the interstitial fluid and then there are proteins present in the intravascular system you are aware of the albumin you are aware of the globulin uh, immunoglobulins and so on out of those 80 percent are albumin. So, do not forget about this 80 percent of the concentration is albumin. Okay. So, that is one area the second is sodium. So, I should actually say sodium chloride, but remember sodium and chloride they would dissociate when they are poured into the water they would dissociate and about about 93 percent of sodium chloride molecules would dissociate into sodium and chloride. So, why do I say about 93 percent why do I mention that over here this will really be useful when we would be talking about the osmolarity. So, the effective osmolarity of the sodium chloride. So, you could say that hey all the sodium chloride which goes in the body is going to go and dissociate and become sodium and chloride and exert some osmolarity again I know we have not talked about osmolarity yet we will talk about it, but the osmolarity uh, of sodium chloride you could say 100 percent, but normally not all of sodium chloride dissociates into sodium and chloride. So, about 93 percent dissociates and the remaining 7 percent stays together as sodium chloride. So, sodium and chloride are very important factors sodium and chloride are primarily present in the extracellular fluid. So, in the extracellular fluid sodium and chloride are in greater concentration. So, if I make this a greater concentration of sodium and chloride present in the extracellular fluid a very tiny amount of sodium and chloride present here very tiny amount very tiny amount. So, why is that why do we have a very small amount of sodium and chloride over here or sodium over here. So, that is what you should know as a doctor similarly let me say one more thing very important thing we have more sodium we have more sodium here than we have sodium here. So, amount of sodium let us say if the sodium is about 142 milli osmoles in the extracellular fluid then out of that about 140 milli osmoles is present in the interstitial and 140 milli osmoles is the concentration is uh, 142 into intravascular and uh, intracellular is really very small about. So, if this is um, this is extracellular fluid and this is intracellular fluid only about 14 14 milli osmoles is present inside the cell. So, let us try to explain the reason for this. So, first of all let us explain why do we have more sodium outside here and why do we have less sodium here. So, the reason for that is as I think you would have already guessed it the reason for that is going to be that we have the very famous sodium potassium ATPase pump. Remember that energy dependent pump. So, this should be really the initial uh, chapters of the physiology that the cells have sodium potassium ATPase pumps. The function of that pump is that it throws sodium out and it pulls potassium in. So, if this pump was not working so you should see it this way if this pump was not working then what would happen well the sodium would diffuse into the cell sodium can diffuse in the cell and it does slowly diffuse in the cell there are special channels for the sodium to go in the cell as well. So, if you have read the um, action potentials you know that there are special channels which are sodium channels and they are used when they open the sodium goes inside the cell in a burst. But even after those channels we 